Aloha, I'm Josie. Waimea Valley is a botanical garden and cultural site, and we house about 60 something varieties of Hawaiian heirloom kalo. And I just want to say mahalo nui to UH Kanivai for putting on this, out this video uh, so we can all celebrate Halawa together. Uh, at this point, I want to uh, share how we started um, celebrating Halawa. It started uh, early 2003, I believe, in the 2000s. And Uncle Jerry, Auntie Gladys, and Penny Levin came almost every year to look at our collection and, and gave us advice to grow them. It was such a special time. And after a while, we were like, why don't we make it a celebration every year where you know we can invite friends and whoever wants to come and join Uncle Jerry while he was here. So it grew to be a workshop and later a festival. Our collection started in, I believe, early 70s where we got a whole bunch of our hoolies from Lion Arboretum and Sitar Molokai and many other partners. Aloha. Um, my name is Duke Morgan. I'm the horticulturist at Waimea Valley. I uh, just wanted to do a quick thank you to Kanewai Ohana for shedding some light and some technology on the Kalo collections. Um, so mahalo you guys for all that work. Um, yeah, we grow typically all of the Hawaiian varieties in our collection, which is a little bit different than the common mahi is mala. So we face a couple of different challenges that the farmers and the backyard gardeners might might not really run into. <clears throat> um, so we are a we are a botanical garden, and we keep technically an archived collection of the heirloom Hawaiian varieties, and we've actually shed a few of the other Pacific varieties um, so that we could concentrate on the Hawaiian taros. Um, so a few challenges that we do have here um, is a rotation, because we don't have tons of space like most of you guys don't have too much space, but uh, we're passionate, so we make it work. Um, and another little challenge within the rotating collections is that we have a Kalo and Ava festival annually, so we need to get the Kalo ready to about five months or so, so that it's a uh, good age to ID. So having the time restraint within the year as well as the rotational issue um, stuff kind of backs up pretty quick as far as um, having the soil tested and amended, figuring out spacing, getting new accessions and putting them into the collection, uh, things like this. Um, a few years ago we really thought we had a bad um, Dashin mosaic virus outbreak um, and it, I think it was just showing itself a lot because of the care of the plants was a little lower than we could have given it. Um, so we grew most of them out of that. So that was that was nice to see. Um, <clears throat> yeah, having having been growing or helping grow uh, in East Maui, um, up on the Big Island, a lot of different farmers always speak highly of the Ka'i varieties. Here, I think typically the spacing and where they are compared to laloas and other large size taros in the garden makes a big difference for the growing season because ka'is and pe'ali'is and some of the smaller apuai and those guys get crowded out um, and then we run into some issues with um, with that. The other side note on the ka'is is each time we ku'i, um, even if it's a mixed bag in the pressure cooker, the corms are, are like rubber rubber nuggets it's always fun to, to either break the blender or watch it bounce off of the the pohaku regardless of where we're growing 
uh, here in Waimea, we always go back to kind of a few principles that are really important. Um, one being a budget, um, not necessarily just like a monetary budget, but um, like a time budget. If we have enough staff to be to be hands on in that collection, weeds and pests, etc. Um, location is really big here because we have tons of canopy cover. Um, we have some flood prone areas and we have some areas that are pretty degraded. So we kind of have to keep this in mind, what location we're going to grow, how the sun is, how the sun and moon are moving, uh, during those months. Yeah. Typically Hawaiian soils are super clay. Um, a lot of it is really nice volcanic parent material. Um, but a lot of it's really degraded and a lot of nutrients are actually locked up in the soil. So we're amending to those specific locations for each growing cycle, which is typically eight to nine months for us because things go a little bit quicker. Um, and we have to keep in mind the, the Kala and Ava festival every year. Um, so after amendments, um, spacing is really important because we have some malas that are really tight, um, really rocky, um, yeah, prone to, to different types of outside factors. So spacing is really critical for a lot of those things. And we're, we're kind of a standard three foot in between row two foot in row spacing which is actually a little tight for us sometimes especially with the big um, the big plants um and then and then time how much time we need the kala to grow and how much time we have to take care of it because we take care of 20 <laughs> other collections of really critical plants um so for all you mahi eyes out there farming kalo Mahalo, um, and then everyone that keeps collections alive um, that are there f for reference use and ways for other farmers to get varieties that they may have lost because we all we all cycle through um, and lose plants and gain plants so it's really <clears throat> it's really the community of Kahlo growers that is keeping Kahlo moving forward so we're super super thankful for you guys um, and yeah, the main thing is to just have fun, uh, spend time in the mala, take notes, use your bulletin 84 and yeah, happy growing.